Happy Sunday, Shoreline families. I hope that you're doing well. Uh, and I also hope that you've been following along with our condensed curriculum that we've been putting out. Uh, you can find that uh, at our family resources page. It's on Shoreline's website. So uh, if you haven't been following along, that is a perfect place to start. Uh, so today we are gonna continue with the story of the prodigal son. I wanna, I wanna reread the story of the prodigal son. Um, just for the sake of those who maybe haven't read it yet last week. Uh, but this week, what we're going to focus on uh, after we've read the story of the prodigal son is the, the interaction between the father and the older brother uh, and, and how the older brother was really bothered by his father's reaction. Uh, but first, let me start by reading the story. Running away. The story of the lost son from Luke chapter 15. Jesus told this story about a boy who ran away. Once upon a time, there was a boy and his dad. Now one day, the boy gets to thinking, maybe if I didn't have my dad around telling me what is good for me all the time, I'd be happier. He's spoiling my fun, he thinks. Does my dad really want me to be happy? Does my dad really love me? The son never thought about that before, but suddenly he doesn't know anymore. So the son goes to his father and says, Dad, I'm better off without you. I can look after myself. Just give me my share of your money. His father is sad, but he won't force his boy to stay. So he gives his son what he wants. The son takes the money and goes on a long, long journey to a far off country. And everything's wonderful and perfect for a while. He can go wherever he wants, do whatever he wants, be whoever he wants. He is the boss and he is free. Sometimes he gets a strange, hungry, homesick feeling inside his heart. But then he just eats more or drinks more or buys more clothes or goes to more parties until it all goes away. Uh, by the way, the book uh, or, or the Bible that I am reading is the Jesus Storybook Bible, another fantastic resource. Um, I know I talked about the Beginner's Bible as well as the Adventure Bible, but this is another fantastic resource. And, and this is the Bible that I'm using today. But soon his money runs out, and so do his friends. He ends up getting the only job he can find, feeding pigs. One day he is so hungry and so desperate, he even tries some piggy food. What am I doing, he says suddenly, as if woken from a nightmare. He spits, yuck, all of it, ick out of his mouth. My father's rich, and I'm here in a pigsty eating piggy food. He wipes his mouth, dusts himself off, and says, I'm going home. As he starts for home, though, he begins to worry. Dad won't love me anymore. I've been too bad. He won't want me for his son anymore. So he practices I'm sorry speech. All this time, what he doesn't know is that day after day, his dad has been standing on his porch, straining his eyes, looking into the distance, waiting for his son to come home. He just can't stop loving him. He longs for the sound of his boy's voice. He can't be happy until he gets him back. The sun is still a long way off, but his dad sees him coming. What will the dad do? Fold his arms and frown? Well, that'll teach you. And just you wait, young man. No, that's not how the story goes. The dad leaps off the porch, races down the hill, through the gap in the hedge, up the road. Before his son can even begin his I'm sorry speech, 
His dad runs to him, throws his arms around him, and can't stop kissing him. Let's have a party, his dad shouts. My boy's home. He ran away. I lost him, but now I have him back. Jesus told them, God is like the dad who couldn't stop loving his boy. And people are like the son who said, does my dad really want me to be happy? Jesus told people this story to show them what God is like and to show people what they are like so they could know however far they ran, however well they hid, however lost they were, it wouldn't matter because God's children could never run too far or be too lost for God to find them. So where this story ends, we're, we're going to pick up in Luke chapter 15, starting at verse 25. And, and this is the interaction uh, between the father and the older son after the older son realizes what's happening. Meanwhile, the older son was in the fields working. When he returned home, he heard music and dancing in the house. And he asked one of the servants, what's going on? Your brother is back, he was told, and your father has killed the fattened calf. We're celebrating because of a safe return. The older brother was angry and wouldn't go in. His father came out and begged him, but he replied, All these years I've slaved for you, and you never once refused to do a single thing you told me to do. And in all that time, you never gave me even one young goat for a feast with my friends. Yet you know, when this son of yours comes back after squandering your money, you celebrate by killing the fattened calf. His father said to him, look, dear son, you have always stayed by me and everything I have is yours. We had to celebrate this happy day for your brother was dead and has come back to life. He was lost, but he is now found. So we have some discussion questions to look through. And so number one is, how would you describe the older brother when he found out his father threw a party celebrating the younger son's return. To facilitate this confirma- uh, conversation, here are some prompts that you can use. Uh, tell your tell your kids um, words like angry, bitter, jealous, ungrateful, resentful. Th- those are words um, that that you can help explore with them to really help them understand how the older brother is feeling. Now, the second question, why do you think the older brother was so mad? Encourage your child that it's okay to have these feelings. It's okay to be frustrated. But if we don't forgive, if we don't let go, we're going to miss out on some really great things. A follow-up question to that is, Have you ever been mad that someone else got something good that you didn't think they deserved? I know growing up with my older brothers uh, or with my older brother and my younger brother, I felt like that all the time. And and I realize now that if if I would have held on to that stuff, that would have really hurt my relationships with my brother. And the third question, what, what can we miss out on when we, when we refuse to forgive? Nothing will block the flow of grace like an ungrateful, unforgiving heart. We can miss out on God's greatest blessings. But the coolest thing 
is that our hearts change when we forgive. We are the ones who are changed by forgiving. So I want to close in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for always offering forgiveness to us. Just like the Father in this story Jesus told. When we feel like holding on to anger like the older brother, would you please help us choose to forgive instead? We absolutely need your help to do that, Lord. We love and trust you, God. In Jesus' holy and most precious name we pray. Amen. Well, I hope that you stay tuned uh, for our 10 o'clock live stream as Pastor Kevin uh, gets ready to deliver another message. Uh, we encourage you to worship together as a family when the worship music's on. I know for uh, Hendrix, Crystal, and I, we we really engage and, and love the music. And there's just nothing more precious than watching our little guy uh, jump around and dance. Uh, and, and we just love it. So thank you so much for letting me and us as Kids Ministry be a part of your Sunday morning experience. Thank you. God bless.